Welcome back to this series of Black Hat Executive Spotlights. Terry Sweeney here with Black Hat. I'm joined now by Curtis Simpson, CISO of Armis. Curtis, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. We are here to talk about understanding and addressing the true risks facing connected machinery and operational technology, which of course takes us right to the uh, topic du jour of supply chain attacks. Why are we seeing such an uptick in attacks on, on critical infrastructure that are reliant on connected machinery? Yeah, it's a great question. And really the starting point is the NSA and CISA warned us that we were gonna be seeing this last year. And they gave us the reasons fundamentally why. And really the quick answer though, is the pivot from traditional ransomware to what we're seeing now. You've gotta be able to drive high dollar ransom payouts. How do you do that? You steal the information in addition to encrypting it, yes. But what if you can impact connected machinery? Now it's not about replacing or restoring from a backup, it's about ripping and replacing assets in industry sectors operations where availability and safety are paramount. So these attacks are going directly against what's most paramount to these operations to demand some of the highest dollar ransoms we've ever seen and they're working. And with every successful attack in the news, that's ultimately bolstering the, um, the endeavors of some of these other bad actors and, and, and attackers that we're seeing that are thinking about pursuing other targets and then actively do. So why just settle for data when you can wreck machinery and customer relationships and supplier and third-party relationships? Uh, the, the payoff is obviously just exponentially better, right? And of course, very much so. And we're seeing that in the news. And what you're also seeing is the notoriety that you get downstream from that. So execute this one massive attack. Now, not only have you potentially made a massive payout or achieved a massive payout, now you've gained notoriety in the larger community. You're now able to potentially sell your services to this larger bad actor community at scale and make even more money. I guess what we forget on, on this side of the equation is that bragging rights in that world are, are, are great marketing. I think that's a, a fair paraphrase. Yeah, and I think it's important to remember that. That is really happening day in and day out and is actually, again, bolstering those capabilities behind the scenes without us realizing. So SolarWinds has been maybe the most prominent or notorious example of, of the supply chain attacks that, that we've seen escalating. Talk a little bit, if you would, about what operations should be taking um, from these escalating attacks and um, as a side note, um, are the recent U.S. federal directives helpful in any way? Yeah, they are very helpful. And I'll, I'll touch on that um, in a couple of different ways. But as we look at this, really what we have to do is acknowledge a couple key things. All of these connected devices, whether we're talking the Internet of Things, like sensors and cameras running in these facilities to the actual PLCs and connected refrigerators and actual machinery that's delivering services and critical infrastructure and capabilities, their computers, they're running alongside many devices we don't understand. And as cyber practitioners in many of these types of operations, we don't know what they are. We don't know what they're doing. We don't know what normal looks like. And if we think of that in a traditional cyber practitioner scope, that's disastrous. If we don't know what we have, we don't know what it's supposed to do. We don't know what normal looks like. We can't safeguard it, let alone respond to those attacks. We have to, focus on that as being paramount because we can't build an effective program if we can't do those things. And what you're seeing in terms of federal mandates and some of the, the federal conversation just in general, it's already having an impact. Public sector very often pushes private sector in many different capacities. But one of those is, and I've lived through this many in many different ways throughout my career, is private sector services public sector. And if public sector demands that a certain standard be met, private sector needs to meet that standard as well, both in safeguarding their own operations as well as safeguarding those services and data in relation to public sector. So it is having a very significant, and I would say rapid ripple effect like we haven't ever seen before in this very active space. So um, more so than ever, we are, we are more connected at more points than ever. Uh, and and these, these attacks obviously uh, demonstrate that amply and, 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 and really also demonstrate the vulnerability. Uh, that being said, talk a bit, if you would, about how operations, whether they're manufacturers or, or smart cities, how can they enhance their own security operations to enable true resilience against these kinds of attacks? 
It really is. It really comes down to a couple things and they really revolve around visibility. So it first and foremost, and this has always been important as a cyber leader, practitioner, et cetera, is we have to know what is critical to our business. What, what strategies are critical, what services and solutions support those strategies, both in terms of current operations and future operations. And then once we have that lens, what we now need to look at is what's in our landscape and what either has direct line of sight or line of sight in general, potentially even integrating with these assets that could disrupt them. We have to really take again, this visibility approach coupled with a cyber resilience strategy. It's not about patching everything. It's not about being able to mitigate every single risk that exists in the landscape because we can't. You can't patch all IoT. You can't patch OT for the most part. What we have to do is look at, again, what we have, what matters most, and what is potentially, what it has the potential to disrupt what matters most, and how do we prioritize our efforts from a business and technology perspective to safeguard what matters most. And the great thing is, is the technologies exist. There's many different service providers out there now and, and um, MSSPs that have been working very closely with different organizations to help them achieve these efforts at scale. A few years ago, this was a more bleak situation. The risk was there. The options were a lot less or were, were much fewer and far between. Now the risk is high, but the options truly exist to manage that risk in an operational way. Okay. Curtis, close us out with um, some thoughts about what um, enterprises that are less reliant upon connected machinery be taking from this rapidly growing risk. Yeah, I think there's a couple things here. One of the really important things to note is if you look at these attacks recently against cooperatives in the farming space, a couple interesting elements that came out of those conversations, both from the attacker's perspective, and I would say probably from the industry and operations perspective. The attackers were looking at these entities as potentially being too small to fall into critical infrastructure territories or supply chain no-goes. And in many cases, so do operations. Operations are commonly looking at the big targets of the targets. Everyone's the target. It's, no, it's, it's not the big targets. It's about the exposure and the ease of exploiting that exposure. So what we have to do from an enterprise perspective is at a minimum, look at how we're exposed from the internet's perspective. We all have IoT in our landscape. Many of those IoT devices, for example, are connected directly to the internet without any visibility within the operation. Well, a bad actor rapidly gains that visibility, rapidly exploits that capability within an environment for which there is no visibility, and then uses that to gain that strong foothold and exploit that environment to their end. We have to be cognizant that that's how attacks are playing out today. And we've got to look at what's happening in this space from the enterprise perspective in that all connected devices are computers and are being exploited as any other computer is. Great insights on uh, operational technology and the impact of supply chain attacks, Curtis. Thanks so much for joining us for this Black Hat Executive Spotlight. Thank you, Terry. We've been talking with Curtis Simpson, CISO for Armis. This has been Terry Sweeney for Black Hat. Thanks for joining us for this Executive Spotlight, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>